Uh, Advanced Gravis joined uh, the Macintosh segment, segment of the market back in 1988. It was, uh, I was looking through the records the other day, I think it was uh, October of 88 we shipped our first Macintosh joystick. It was for the old uh, Mac 512 and plus. And uh, we've been in it ever since, although the first few years on the market were certainly a lot slower than today. Um, actually, it started a little bit earlier than that. The, um, the last re major revision that we did to the Mouse Stick 2, which would have been the software version 2 series, uh, we did some work with Microsoft when they did the uh, last rev of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And one of the problems that they had run into is they wanted the Macintosh version to be the same as the PC version. Uh, they had a limitation that they couldn't run two joysticks on the Macintosh at that time and uh, that was due to a limitation within the ADB system. So uh, we went to work on it, worked around that, and uh, Flight Sim started shipping in August, and uh, the sales picked up uh, fairly shortly after that. But at that point in time, we were already in development of our Mouse Stick 2, and uh, that shipped the following January, and um, things just skyrocketed, and they've been climbing ever since. And they've actually we've noticed a dramatic increase even in the last year again. It's taken quite a jump again. Mm. Yeah, last year, uh, last August, in fact, we announced that we were going to do a Macintosh version of our Phoenix Flight and Weapons Control. And we'd actually started development on a lot of it, uh, working out the design interface and so forth. But at the same time, we were also working on a new PC product that's based on a similar system as the, uh, as the Phoenix, that's called the Firebird. Um, as we were doing that, we were learning a lot of things about the Phoenix, things that we could have done differently. And uh, we also looked at uh, what hardware features the product offered. And uh, we made a conscious decision partway through the process that the Firebird would actually be better suited for the Mac market. It uh, doesn't have the throttle rudder that, uh, system that the uh, Phoenix had on it, but it does have a throttle that, uh, although it only supports analog on the PC, the Mac version, we're going to support analog and digital. And then uh, we're also going to put a, uh, an adapter system that will allow the Mac user to hook up any PC rudder pedals to the Firebird. So it's a uh, lower cost device than the Phoenix would have been and uh, with the ability to hook the rudder pedals up and the, the digital throttle control, the user actually gets more than they would have with the Phoenix. Well, we're st proud of the fact that we still have the widest degree of compatibility on the market. There are still games out there that work with our product and don't work with the others. Uh, a notable exception would be uh, what's still very popular, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Ours is still the only joystick on the market that's fully compatible with that product. Uh, so that's obviously one uh, item. Uh, the software interface is another issue. The user wants to look uh, at the software interface, how hard or how easy is it to actually set up to work with their games. Uh, plus, do they have to set it up or do the games ship with control settings already for the joystick? And uh, again, we have the largest degree of support there. And uh, it's like to continue that way for a while. Ours, uh, our products are the largest distributed worldwide, plus uh, they're available in a lot of the places where you won't find competitors such as Sam's and you know stores of that nature. That's certainly done a lot for the gaming market. In fact, uh, at the uh, game developer conference here, I've talked to a few developers who are at the moment PC only or only into the Macintosh in a very slight way and asking them are they looking at the Mac market and, and so forth to hopefully have them bring some of their hot titles over. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of them are looking at the Mac market quite differently with the Power Mac now. Um, before they had to push a lot more pixels on the Mac than the PC and they really didn't have the horsepower to do that, whereas uh, it's a whole different story now. And uh, with our, even with our own products, we're looking at uh, with things like the new Firebird and so forth to make sure that our software, although it doesn't require a lot of acceleration because the user interface isn't in a gaming environment, uh, we'll be making sure that it's accelerated for the Power Mac. And, so we'll be able to carry the products into the future when Copeland comes along and so on and so forth. Sure. 
actually it's a blessing for the Mac. Um, the standard game port on the PC uh, is limited to two controllers, uh, which is two axes per joystick and two buttons per joystick. To go beyond that, you have to do things that are pretty elaborate like we have with the Phoenix and Firebird where you have separate controllers with inside the device and where you hook into both the game port and the keyboard port. Uh, on the Macintosh market, um, we've been able to support multiple devices with numerous buttons for many, many years now. So the Mac's had a lot of advantages over the years that the uh, PC hasn't had. In fact, one of the um, issues on the PC that's really helped the uh, great success of products like our Phoenix is the fact that we took a lot of the software interface that we learned on the Macintosh and ported it over onto the PC. So it's actually the Mac market has actually helped the PC user in that regard.